Welcome to Marriage and Life Stories with Kansime, a show on YouTube where we discuss uh, marriages, parenting, real life stories, home remedies, and much more. Kindly subscribe, like, share, and give us a comment in the comment section. I am super excited about our show today. I can't wait to bring you the amazing people that we are hosting today. A people that has come from grace. They have come to amazing grace and they are coming from more for with abundant grace. Is that how it began for them? Let's listen to their story and you judge for yourself. I am so sure you're going to grow. You're going to be blessed. You're going to to learn so much, much more than you have ever had. Uh, with me today is Reverend Medad Dr. Birunjibi Ayesu. He has all the titles. Reverend, Doctor, Mr. <laughs> Husband, Father. You know, he can speak to us from every angle. Welcome Reverend Dr. Birunjibi Ayesu and your beautiful wife. I will ask you to introduce yourself to the viewers and then your beautiful wife will also introduce herself to the viewers. Uh, I greet you all viewers. I am the Reverend Dr. Medadi Virunji Yaesu. I am a pastor, but I am also a founder and president of World Shine Ministries, which exists to raise godly men and godly women to lead Uganda and influence the nations of the world. Wow. I have been married for 30 years. Those are three decades. Three decades of marriage. <laughs> Keeping someone's daughter. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd like my wife, uh, Miss Uganda, 1991, yes. to greet you. I greet you, viewers. Uh, my name is Connie Jore Virunji. And uh, I'm so pleased to be here. I am a, a director in World Shine Ministries, where I work together with my husband. And uh, I am also a mother of five children, and recently God gave us a daughter-in-law. Wow, 30 years. Now let me tell you, that in, in, in Ankole and the Western region, we pay bright price in terms of cows. I can confidently say there are still more cows in there, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> there are still more cows. Now that's a, a, a beautiful introduction. A man and a woman working together and they are so in love and, and they are committed to, to the ministry and to raising a generation. Uh, we are dealing with so many millennials right now. And raising a generation of integrity in the workplace and in their own lives to the glory of God. Reverend, today we are going to stick on the marriage aspect yes. uh, of, of your life. Yes. Tell us, at some point, I had your testimony, but today I want you to share this testimony with the others. Tell us a little bit more before you married this beautiful girl. Talk to us. What is the kind of family that you grew in? That uh... um, Thank you very much. I was coming from a dysfunctional family. My father had five wives, mm -hmm. and my mother was the first wife. Nah, my father had 32 children and... Uh, Three, two. Yes, yeah, 32 children, five wives, they were all fighting for one husband. Wow. And so, they, I come from a background of polygamy. Mm. Violence, hatred, uh, unhealthy competition, sexual immorality, all sorts of drunkardness. So that kind of dysfunctional family yes. and also I come from a family where when I was eight years old our father abandoned us in Kavari and went away with four wives <coughs> and abandoned us in Kavari with our mother so that is my background of abandonment of rejection of all sorts of things so when I got married to Miss Uganda, 1991... So give us a brief in-between. Uh, How did you manage to grow up with five <laughs> stepmothers and it then was, after a little bit of it, you were abandoned and left on your it own? It was a very, very difficult, difficult time. Those of people who have lived under polygamy... It must be. It is a very horrendous experience. 
where the women are competing, the children are competing, the women hate each other, the children uh, inherit the hatred from their parents, uh, poverty when you are rich but you are poor, you are rejected if you are from a rejected mother, and violence and quarreling. So that was the lifestyle I grew up with. So I grew up unloved. I grew up um, without self-esteem. I grew up without appreciating anything good in me. So in 1991, I was so blessed to get married to uh, Constance Jerry Virunji, my beautiful wife here. Mm -hmm. Miss Uganda, 1991. Well, mm. we first met in Chinyasano Girls. Mm. When I finished my S6 in 1986, and uh, President Museveni had cut off Western Uganda from another part of Uganda. Uh, all of you know that war. So we didn't go to Makerere, so I had to look for a job. Mm. So there was a teacher called uh, Kedris uh, to the agenda now. She's actually director in the Ministry of Education. <laughs> in Ministry of Education. Mm -hmm. So she gave me a job of teaching, and uh, in her sitting room, I met this uh, drop dead beautiful woman. Wow. She was a student there, a mm -hmm. head girl. So we connected. She became my student, and we used to take the girls out for outreach to preach in different churches. Mm. So we used to go together, so that's how we connected. Wow. That is when the lights became full. Mm -hmm. But uh, we didn't get married until after six years later. So 1986, we married in 1991. On the 31st of August, 1991. Of August. Yes. That's um, a year behind us because we are 11th of August. <laughs> 11th of August. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so now that's how we met. a beautiful wife. Yes. How was it like when you saw him? Did you know he was the one? How did you finally <laughs> come to say yes? Uh, and how did he propose? G give us all that. Eh? Uh, at the beginning, uh, I first saw him when uh, he came to teach. And uh, I was in senior four. And he was one of the, our teachers. Mm. Of course, he was very intelligent and wow. always laughing and, mm. and, and so. in, in very handsome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the girls in the, in the school, they, they had an eye on every, every girl mm. admired him. Yes. Because of who he was, mm. he was always laughing whenever he would meet us students. He wouldn't treat us as students, mm. but he would just greet you as if he's been meeting you for a long time. I mm. mean, he was that jolly yes. person. And um, of course, him being my teacher, uh, I, I didn't think uh, a lot at first, until later I realized as if there was something more than, uh, mm, than someone's no teacher. Friendship. <laughs> mm. And then after a time, yeah, he called me. And I still remember vividly the question he asked me. He asked me, like, I'm a chiga person, very straight. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a boyfriend? Oh. <laughs> and in my heart, I was like, I was still very young, very shy girl. I hadn't gone into those things of a boyfriend mm -hmm. or something, so I didn't understand what he meant. Mm. Uh, but I told him straight away, no, I don't have a boyfriend. But, uh, of course, in my heart, I really loved him yes. because of who he was. Who he was. Very, 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 handsome, very handsome, very intelligent, mm -hmm. eh? very jolly. Who wouldn't want a husband and I kid? Know, I know, <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. So I told him I didn't have, and uh, deep down in my heart, I was like, God, if something wants to come out so of So did this. he ask you that, like that and he stopped? Yeah, he just said that. Do you have a boyfriend? And we stopped. I said no. Hmm. And he didn't add any other thing. He knew his, his yeah. interests are now yeah. very open. Yeah, How long did it take from... Five years from, later. He added something later on. Ah, okay. yeah. How long did it take from that moment hmm. to the time that you got married? 
It took, uh, that was 1986, and we got married in 1991. Wow, so you were caught in courtship all that while. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now I met but my husband. But we remained in touch. I met my husband in March. Mm. Uh, it was my birthday. Uh, two weeks later, he told me he wants to marry me. <laughs> you know, just like that. I want to marry you. Yes or no? Uh, you know, out of shock, I said, let me think about it. Mm. And, and uh, I was so confused. After about one week, I said, yes, it is okay. Mm. Now, when I said it is fine, then he said, I'm going to arrange for, to come and pay a bride price. I was like, you barely know me. <laughs> you know, we met in March. He paid my bride price in June. We wedded in August. So there was no courtship, no mm. long relationship. Mm. But here mm. we are 31 years. Hey. Reverend, hey. when you hey. married hey. your beautiful wife, how was it? I, I know Bachiga men or men from the West. Mm. There, there is a way in, in which you really want to emphasize your, you being the man. How was it in the early years of your marriage? Uh, when we got married, of course, uh, uh, you have a honeymoon period. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> honeymoon period, you try to compromise, you try to be nice. Mm. But after a honeymoon period, of course, I began as a cultural husband. And um, a cultural husband. Uh, before uh, you even go there, first list to the viewers the type of men <laughs> that are there, type of husbands, like three, four, five, and then identify <laughs> with what you, you were and what you are right now. The first one is, of course, a cultural husband who is uh, a Mushiga man, who is like a king. And uh, so, if you are like a king, your wife is like a subject. Mm. So she has to do everything that a king uh, deserves. Remove your shoes. Remove your, my your shoes. Food, yeah, carry your bag. Food, oh. Wash my clothes. So there are some men who are cultural husbands. Mm. They want to get all the 14 commandments. Mm. Uh, we have in Kavare, a woman should never uh, talk to his wife, they say she has been bewitched, a woman should never touch money, all the money belongs to the husband. <laughs> when I speak oh twice, you speak, once. you speak once. When I speak mm -hmm. once, you shut up. Mm -hmm. A woman should not hold the hands with his wife. They think they have been given a... A man uh, should not hold hands hey, with the wife. They, they think you have, she has bewitched you. Oh. And all sorts of things. In other things. words, there should not be any emotional affection. No, it is in bed public only. public display of affection. No, you can't just... Mm. Uh, so, it is and only in bed one? that you, you take. Then there are also acidic husbands. Mm -hmm. Acidic husbands is when a man speaks acid to his wife. Mm. The man is uh, talking uh, so much that his wife... Uh, cannot cannot say anything, so they shout at their wives, and that is one type of husband. Mm -hmm. Especially for us, Bachiga, you mm -hmm. talk, you mm -hmm. speak as if you are speaking to a child. Yeah. They are also bachelor husbands, bachelor, uh, bachelor husband. husband who behaves like a bachelor. They are married, but they are they behave like bachelors. Mm -hmm. Everything they do, this is my chair, this is my family, this is my, my money, house, this is my, my house, land. this is my land. So there is no connection that they are now married. Mm. The other ones, they are called general husbands. A general <laughs> husband is a husband <laughs> for everybody. They hug people, women, they uh, uh, give money to women. So mm. there is no somebody special mm. whom we made a vow to. Mm. They are a husband for everybody, something like that. Okay. Very moody, very stingy. Mm. Then they are dry husbands. Dry husband. A dry husband is a husband who doesn't talk with his wife. They are always silent. Mm. Because if I talk, then I am weak. But wow. if I keep quiet and uh, I look like a chapati, mm -hmm. then... Uh, <laughs> I rule, I rule you. You fear yes. to even ask me questions. You don't ask for money after There are money. others who are called Panado husbands. Mm. A Panado husband is a husband who becomes nice to his wife when he wants sex or when he wants some money. Mm. Uh, so you, are, you come to your wife 
like a panado, your wife acts like a panado. Mm. But after you have got what you want, then you start saying, come on, Yoko, what sort of woman <laughs> did I marry? Did I marry you drunk? So they, they are nice when they want something, mm. but when they get what they want, they are horrible. Yes. Then the others we call paras parasitic husband. The mm. parasitic husband, especially those who have their wives who work, why do I need to go and work? Mm -hmm. So he stays at home. The man is the coming. Man. I actually know <laughs> the of man is a, a young man. He don't look for jobs. I was I was told it's a story that this man uh, got five girlfriends. Yeah. <laughs> and sent them. He would get one, send them to Saudi Arabia. Right. To go and and work. And work. And so this lady will keep sending money, hoping the money is building. Is building. Mm. <laughs> so he sent another girl. He sent another girl, and up until they were five, and he had a steady income. Yeah. From five girlfriends, picking money from all of them, and hoping that uh, they they were all hoping that he's building a house. Each one of them thinks yeah. they are the other one. So those are parasitic husbands. Yes. They are lazy and they are very, very clever in how they get the money. Actually, but they, they are, are not very clever. They are deceitful. <laughs> deceitful. That is the right Okay, word. I think that's the right mm -hmm. one. But the so, others whom we call baby husbands, the baby husband <laughs> is, uh, those are husbands who, uh, who uh, behave like babies. Everything, mm. their mothers run their marriage by remote. Mm. Everything mommy cooks like this, mm. mommy did things like this, mommy. The mama's boys. The mama's boys, mm. and, and they are very, very dangerous. Mm. Very dangerous because they can't make decisions, and you know you are like married to two wives. Mm. You are married to your mother, and, and you are married to your wife. wife. So they, and so they, you are torn apart. <laughs> you are torn apart. Mm. But they are also visiting husbands, and I used to be one of them. Visiting husband Begin is a, it from there and tell us your early story. <laughs> a vi the visiting, the originally a, visiting husband. A visiting husband is not always at home. Mm. He comes as a visitor, provides for the family, material things, but he's involved in so many things. Mm -hmm. So work, church, all that kind of uh, things occupy you, so on your priority, mm. your wife is like number 10. Mm. Your family is like number 10. In other words, if she needs you, she also makes an appointment. <laughs> <laughs> I know they, of a lady who made an appointment hey. to go and see her pastor husband. So, mm. uh, because of my background of a dysfunctional family, I didn't learn from my father mm. and my mother. Very few lessons. But also because I was a Muchiga man, but Chiga men, they were not ruled by a king, so they were free. So the combination of those two characters, mm. plus my woundedness, mm. being abandoned, being rejected, being disowned, all those things, they combined to make me a tiger husband. So I was wow. behaving like a tiger. My wife grew thinner, she was unhappy. So the first five years really were very, very miserable. Maybe we can hear from you, Miss Uganda. Mm. Within those five years, did you ever think about wanting to abandon the marriage and go away? Mm. Did you ever think about just being there because eh, some women say they are, I'm here because of the children. What ran through your mind that kept you sane for those five years? Of course, when we got married and uh, things came to reality, I couldn't understand. Mm. Because the man who I, I had met, mm. who was <laughs> God loving, always smiling, very jolly, friendly, very friendly, was now turning into a tiger. A tiger. And I, like, I mentioned tiger because I've had him yeah. talk about. <laughs> <laughs> like he has mentioned, mm. not that he wanted to, but. Uh, because he was embedded in the culture mm. and he was trying to, to do like all Bachiga men do mm. and he end up, ended up uh, behaving the way he was behaving. Mm. And definitely many times I'll be like, I think, let me run away. Mm. <laughs> I cannot manage this. Yes. Because back home where I was brought up in uh, Rukunjiri, mm. I am Omhororo, mm -hmm. and uh, 
There is a way Bahoro behave. Mm. I mean, they are gentle. Very gentle. Mm. <laughs> and uh, I would compare the way we speak at home yes. with the way he was speaking to me. For him, even when he was genuinely speaking as a Mchiga man, it's at the top of to his me voice. it was this man is shouting, shouting at me. <laughs> <laughs> and in what I'll be like, he doesn't love me. Yeah. Yeah? Because how can somebody whom you love shout at them? Yes. And then I would try to speak to him, he wouldn't understand what I'm saying. He would be like, but for me, I'm speaking. Like, this is normal. This is normal, oh. this is how we do it. This so is... what, what, at what point did you say, I, I will not go away, let me hang around? Mm, I think after a time, uh, like two, two years, I think I began coming back to my senses. Mm. And one thing that helped me uh, is when I read a book by Omarshan, mm. The Power of a Praying Wife. Mm. And in the introduction, Omarshan was saying that she and her husband used to have a... The life was not easy. Mm. And she was always pointing a finger to the husband. Yes. And then she went into prayer, and then the Lord told her mm. that you are the problem. Mm. So when I read that, I was like, probably, maybe... I am not a hundred percent right. Yes. Eh? I'm not whom I think I am. Okay. I am going to ask you to look in that camera and talk to the ladies who are having tiger husbands at home. What do they need to do in brief? So if you have a tiger husband at home, one of the things that you need to do is to love them unconditionally to accept them the way they are. And the most important thing, to pray for them. Mm -hmm. And also realize that uh, as a wife, you also have a role to pray, especially in being humble. And you never know when you treat them well and you are humble, uh -huh. and then you pray for them, that would change them. Thank Other you. than criticizing them mm -hmm. and you're also acting the way they are acting, mm -hmm. they will not see the difference. So you have said that the ladies must be understanding, mm -hmm. they have to be humble, mm -hmm. they have to pray, mm -hmm. and they have to... And they also to have to realize that uh, we are of different personalities. Okay. And therefore, uh, you don't have to change the other mm -hmm. because it's very hard to change a human being yes. <laughs> and that's what most people do trying okay. to, to, to try to change the husband I actually and, and to change them to look it. like like them, what you want like what you want mm. but it's not easy it, it, it's, it's impossible God. it's not a God who can change mm. okay reverend we, we in four minutes tell us at what point what other things did you do and then you felt I cannot keep doing this to my wife? And then um, at what point did you say <laughs> enough is enough? Uh, I was not a happy man. You know, I used to be a very happy, jolly young man, smiling all the time. But I discovered that something was wrong somewhere. Mm. Then I developed dates and dates and dates. I'm always, I was always in debt. I discovered something was wrong somewhere. Mm -hmm. And so many other things came in, you know, quarreling sometimes. So I said something is wrong. And yet I was born again, you know. Mm -hmm. We got married when we were born again. Don't think we were pagans. Mm -hmm. Born again, <laughs> but, uh, but you are still trying to adjust oh, to one another was very difficult. Mm -hmm. Adjusting to each other. I wanted to remain myself, she wanted to remain herself. Mm. Uh, but with me, when I finish your food, I know you have known I have liked it, but for her she wanted it to me so to say to thank say you. Thank you. Mm. Some of those things that uh, if you, in a Mushiga man, if you, <laughs> you quarrel with somebody, you change your behavior. You, you buy a gift and then... Uh, buy a gift, you don't just go and say, I'm sorry. Mm. But uh, one day, when I was, I had prayed about it, but one day I found my wife was reading a small book. Small book, but she was reading it privately. Mm -hmm. 
So I wondered why she was reading that book. So when I got it from her, uh, I read the title. I found the title was Taming Your Tiger. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, but I got very angry. I said, how on earth, so the tiger in UK how on earth would this woman uh, take me like a tiger? Mm. And the tiger in Runyankori is a Rutaragwe. So mm. a Rutaragwe is a very terrible animal in the, the Machika culture. So I was very angry, but the Holy Spirit told me, but why can't you first read it? Mm. So I read it, 25 characteristics of a tiger. Unfortunately, I had 23 out of 25. Oh my goodness. So you were at a very high So I was on the prayer mountain. I went there to hide and read it. Mm. But it also had uh, some steps which you can make to, to move from a cultural husband, mm. which is a tiger-like, to a Christian loving and caring husband. Mm. I remember <laughs> I cried under a tree and said, God, this thing must stop. Yes. I can either, I have a choice. Mm. Either Christ is above culture or or is not Christ at all. Mm. I have to stop putting culture above Christ. Mm. Putting, if I am a Christian husband, then I don't need to exalt culture. Some, most of the culture, some of it is demonic. Yes. It is not even biblical. You know, it's just a very dangerous mm. thing. So I made a decision under that tree to have what we call marital metamorphosis. Mm -hmm of moving from a cultural, dictatorial uh, husband and a happy marriage of uh, like uh, when you turn from a caterpillar, mm. then I was transformed into a Christian, loving and caring husband. And uh, that's what I vowed to do. I went back home, I said sorry to her in tears. Mm -hmm. I cried, you can't see a chica man cry. Mm. But I cried because it was deep, deep. And I knew how I had wounded her heart. Mm. I knew how I had carried my baggage I'm of so my background in into marriage. Mm. I learned how I had made her a victim of things she didn't even mm, suspect. No so I decided to change and uh, I wanted to be practical as well. I made her the governor of Bank of Virunji. Wow. So I said, from today, you are going to keep the money. Mm -hmm. I handed over all my checkbooks, what, what, mm -hmm. what, 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 to start managing the money because I discovered that if you empower your wife financially, you have lifted her. I decided to take her back to school. Mm -hmm. She had a diploma. She did a, a degree. She did a master's. I had to empower her economically. And then I had also to involve people because I also told people what mm. I have done. Mm. I had to engage my sisters and my mother. Uh, I had to engage many people mm. and put position, position her as uh, working together. Governor. And I discovered that uh, there's something which I discovered which I had not studied in theology. Mm. That in Genesis chapter 1, Verse 26, 28, the God said, the Bible says, male and female, he created them. Mm -hmm. Same day. And the word them is five times in just two verses. Mm -hmm. He created them, he blessed them, mm -hmm. he told them to multiply, mm -hmm. he told them to fill the earth and subdue it. Mm -hmm. it them, them, them. So I discovered that uh, God created male and female actually equal. And, the, and them, they, they work together, they live together, and then at the end of that uh, chapter 2, he says that that's why a man shall leave his, his father, father and mother, mother. get they united to his wife, they become one. Mm -hmm. So I said then, how did this hyper patriarchy come? Mm -hmm. Where a man is up there, the woman is just... Uh, uh, on the ground like a match. Mm -hmm. So I decided to change my my marriage uh, leadership. And I developed principles which I started using. Okay. Now those I'm principles going to pick you at have that led point. us I want you to look in that camera. Yes. 
there are many men who are struggling in the marriages. Yes. Things are not going right. They feel they are entitled to being up there and the wife down there. The lady has told them the things they need to do to tame their tigers. Look inside that camera and tell your fellow men the purpose of marriage, what they can do to make it better, and the end result. I would like to uh, encourage you men who are looking at me right now, uh, men who are uh, tigers in their marriage, men who, uh, who want to be a hundred percent cultural husbands, the world has changed. You can't now treat your wife like uh, your great grandfathers treated her. So I would like you to have what I did, a, a marital metamorphosis, to be transformed from caterpillar husbands into uh, butterfly husbands who to take care of their wives, to be transformed from cultural, dictatorial, autocratic, uh, nihilistic husbands uh, into godly men, God-fearing husbands who love and care for their wives. And I want to also challenge you. You cannot withdraw from where you didn't deposit. Mm. I want you to deposit because when I was transformed, I said either Christ is above culture or is not Christ at all. So I chose to Christ above culture because Christ transforms culture. So I started depositing. I deposited love into my wife. Mm. I withdrew love. I deposited respect. I deposited trust. I deposited humility. I deposited faithfulness. I deposited generous giving. When I deposited, is, is what I deposited there is what I got. You cannot withdraw from where I didn't deposit. And, and you know the Bible says when, when, you, when, you, what, when you give, it comes back to you, to you full, yes, yes. pressed down, shaken, and running yes. over. Now what if you give anger? So if you give anger, <laughs> or you give a slap, it, or you give, comes, it back comes back to you, back to you full. shaken, full. Yes. Uh, because I, I, I really, really punished myself for all those years. I said if I had loved my wife, if I had hugged my wife, if I had, I had talked to my wife in, in, in a good way, I found I was punishing myself. Mm. But since that day... I didn't get that. Since Could that you? day, sorry. Since that day, uh, the Bible, the, I mean my marriage has never been the same. Within six months, mm. we had... Uh, she had paid all the debts. Wow. Don't ask me how. Mm. Hey, I said, I was a very good, I had a good bank manager here. Mm. Because me people would come and dish the money. Mm. But for her to get money from her, you first make an it application. It has to be really You deserving. have to apply. <laughs> <laughs> and she has to examine mm. your, your applications. Mm. And uh, so, from, so the, for the last 25 years, I, we have had a really wonderful, wonderful marriage. Wow. Our communication changed. You said 25 Our, years. Yes. But I, I, I can see... In the first five years, ah, I really... Ah, those were, were years really of loss. Miserable. Yeah. <laughs> and she had threatened to go away seven, yes. seven times, mm. by the way. Seven times. I think one time she even went to Massacre mm. and came back on the way. So, <laughs> if you need to change, because I waited for her to change, she didn't change. Mm. She waited for me to change, she you didn't did change. change. So one of us had to change. Mm. It is like when you are driving a car in a narrow, a dark road, mm. and another car is coming from the other side. If you put on full rights, you will crash. So no. one of you has to, to put a dim so that you can. Talk about the men. In the event that there is a standoff, who should take the initiative? Of course, the Bible says the man is the head of the family. Mm -hmm. So if you are a head, you have eyes, mm -hmm. and there are two, not and one. You can talk. You <laughs> and can you are on the head, you have ears on the head, you have the mind to think on the head, you have a mouth to speak. Mm -hmm. So me, personally, I believe that a man should take the initiative. Mm -hmm. As you take the initiative to propose, mm -hmm. 
So even in changing your lifestyles, your what, the man should take a lead, according to me. Wow. Okay. Real men take initiatives. Yes, now we are coming to the conclusion of this of this show. I'm going to ask the lady, the beautiful Mrs. Birunji, to look in the camera and give her concluding remarks. <laughs> uh, I just want to say that there is no man that cannot be tamed. Wow. However difficult he seems to be. Mm. If you also pray your part that you are supposed to pray. Mm. Because many times when things that we've been talking about happen, there's a tendency of uh, you saying he has done this, I'll also do this, and then you crash. Mm. But like he has said, if you do your part very well, and then you pray, and then one of you takes the initiative, mm. at the end of the day, things it's will change. It's a win-win situation. It's a win-win situation. Okay. Mm. Reverend Doctor, look in that camera and give you your um, final remarks. I, my final remarks, I am writing a small book called Bachelor of Husbandology. Mm. And in that book, I give the principles that have helped me in my marriage mm. with my wife. The first principle is the principle of love, mm -hmm. that I will love you for better, for worse, yeah. for richer, for poorer, until death do you apart. Mm -hmm. When a problem comes, that is for us. Mm -hmm. When money is not coming, then that is for, for us. <laughs> for, for us. Mm -hmm. they are the principle of grace, that you marry your wife gracefully, so you should treat her gracefully, mm -hmm. and speak to her gracefully, and handle her gracefully. Mm -hmm. When grace goes through the window, your marriage crumbles. Wow. The principle of openness or transparency, to be transparent with my wife, I tell her what I think, uh, open about money, open about my property, open, for example, she is on every agreement of any properties I have. Mm. There are so many men who don't involve their wives. And even when they die, they wives They, they get their little money, yes. hide it along hide the way. Hide it, you don't know even the wow. debts they have. And when you don't they know die, even the loans the they say. have. The banks come and sell the houses. Mm. The principle of accountability, I am accountable to my wife. She's accountable to me. Mm. In every area, even sexual accountability, financial accountability. The principle of trust, my wife trusts me. Mm. Uh, in every area, I trust her. Mm. These things of mistrust and jealousy, you know, they have destroyed marriage. Mm -hmm. The principle of respect, I respect my wife, she respects me, and if there is a need, a man needs his respect. Mm -hmm. If there is a very deep need, mm -hmm. a woman loves his respect. Those who have disrespected each other, they fight, they kill each other. The marriage is... Hey, they break down. The principle of faithfulness, I am faithful to my wife. I have studied abroad, I have been there for years. I, I am faithful to her, even when she's not there. Mm. During the day, during the night. Faithfulness is a very important thing. And the principle of brokenness, brokenness when we quarrel, even if she says this is a spoon and I know it is a grass, <laughs> one, of, one of us must break. I say, I'm sorry, darling, mm. I didn't know it was a spoon. <laughs> that is brokenness. If, if you are two lawyers in a house, you, each one want to win, you crash. But yeah. one of them must break down. Mm. And then tomorrow she says, hey, give, darling. Give time for hey, She said, oh my goodness, did I say it was? <laughs> I said, but yesterday you said. It. So brokenness and humility is a very important thing. Mm. And of course the principle of outreach, I always take her. She loves chicken, mm. so we take her out for chicken. Sometimes we sleep out. Mm. And sometimes your bedroom is monotonous, your home is monotonous. You need to go out. Sometimes I take her to the beaches in Entebbe. Wow. Uh, and uh, some beaches even abroad. And then the other thing which has helped us is the principle of confidentiality. The certain things to get something from my wife is very difficult. Mm. But there are so many wives who expose uh, they publish their, husband, their husband, they publish their husbands. On Facebook or I even read some, some, I read some in the papers, a woman telling people that her husband beeps her that for oh. him is a beeper, you oh, know, exposing her husband's nakedness. Mm. So it's, confidentiality is a very important thing. By the time she tells people out, mm. then she has reached a place of saying okay. enough is enough. One last one. I have seen 
marriages of reverends and priests and bishops die and the marriages are so painful some are covered inside yeah, there yeah. talk to your fellow priests <laughs> I mean when you marry this woman <laughs> she comes as a wife <coughs> she's not your sister yes. she's not your relative yes. she has come to be a wife I know Dr. Benhin separated with, mm. they divorced with his wife not because mm. he had cheated on her but because he was never there and so it was yeah. in the best interest that so i speak to you uh pastors we have pastors have very difficult marriages mm -hmm. and they have very difficult parenting that's why 90 percent of pastors children uh they refuse to be christians mm -hmm. i would like you to balance your uh, marriage and your ministry mm -hmm. it is very very important to balance your marriage and ministry because you see when you die nobody will be a parent to your mm -hmm. husband your your children nobody will be a, a husband to your wife but your job can be taken away by anybody the moment you leave they appoint another person so i'd like you in your priorities god number one but number two your wife number three your children make your priorities put your family on your top priorities Forgive your wives, because most reverends preach about forgiveness, but they don't forgive their wives. Uh, respect your wife. Most reverends, they respect Christians, but they don't respect their wives. Mm -hmm. What you do to Christians, your family is their first church. Mm -hmm. Give your time, your time to your family. Don't be married to the church and then your wife sees you at the church as your co-wife. Communicate. It is very important for communication in marriage. Mm. You communicate to Christians, you are on their WhatsApps, you don't have time to communicate to your wife. It is very, very, very dangerous. Pray for your wife and your children. And if the Bible says that the charity begins at home. Be a man of integrity. Because if your wife discovers you are cheating on her, discovers that you are kissing uh, younger people in the choir, discovers that you are specializing in mother's union, uh, ladies, you have got to be very careful how you walk. The Bible says when I was young, I behaved like a child. But when I grew up, I became a man. Mm -hmm. So your responsibility is a very, very important thing. You are not only priest to the church, you are a priest to your own family. Don't be like Eli. Eli abandoned his family. Mm -hmm. And his family was destroyed. Thank you. Thank Actually, you. even even David, David was a externally a very powerful. powerful man, but domestically he was a failure. Mm. You know, his son raped his daughter. Mm. You know, his son's fight fought, and even is he the one whose first... son married his uh, wife? Yes, twelve wives. He yeah. raped with them mm. in public. So. I would like to begin with yourself. The Bible says, love others, your neighbor, as you love yourself. Mm -hmm. So your wife, the wife is, you. is you. You can't hide money from yourself. You can't shout at yourself. You, you will be mad. Mm -hmm. The Bible says a man shall leave his father and mother and get united to his wife, and they shall become one. Mm -hmm. You cannot submit to a man who doesn't love you. Yes. Neither can you love a woman who doesn't submit mm -hmm. to you. So it's a give and take, and you know that at one time you will stand before the Lord. Thank you will give you. accountability of the wife the that wife God that gave you. you. So I want to challenge you before you stand before God, please treat your wife very well. Honorably. And I want to end by saying, uh, love your wife as if she's going to die tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Love her as if... You are loving her for the last time. Every single day. But plan for your life, your wife as if she's going to live forever. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, if you bond with your wife very well, you will even have wonderful children. Mm -hmm. The children learn by example. And what a wonderful society we shall create. Mm -hmm. But if you are not united, you don't respect one Everything another, things out. will fall apart. Mm -hmm. And you will lose your testimony. And you will end badly, like many people have ended badly, as you know. So be very careful. You know that the devil does not like your ministry, and it can begin by crumbling your home.
somebody who should be praying for you mm. is the one you are fighting against. Mm. She so cannot she cannot pray for you. She's harassed. She's what? Empower your wives. They are not pastors, but empower them mm. to be part of your ministry. Yeah, ministry. Give them opportunities to preach. Go with wow. them when you are visiting, wow. and the Lord will give you a terrific 30 years of marriage or 50 years of marriage. And I was celebrating, I was celebrating 30 years of terrific marriage. Mm -hmm. What a blessed man I am to see that this girl is still looking nice, <laughs> dressed nicely. <laughs> and yeah, people she's very are, she's, Isn't she beautiful? Mm. 1991, she looks like a 15-year-old girl. Uh, it's because how I have treated her. Umchara wa umteke mevinushu. Put money into your wife, dress yes. her up, make her look yeah, the executive. Say, take a cent hey, of all of her. Hey, hey. take a mark a cent. Mm. And uh, what you, you plant is what you will reap. Mm. So if you put money into her, she look beautiful. Mm. You don't need to last on other people's wives. Well. May God bless you abundantly, exceedingly, as God revolutionizes your marriage from a tiger husband to a loving, caring Christian yes, husband. Uh, God bless you. Thank mm. you, thank you so much. Do I need to add on anymore? I will confidently say, if you learn the principles that the Reverend Doctor has shared with his beautiful wife, the marriage will no longer be a, a prison of pain and suffering and, mm. and, and hatred. It will be a circle of love, a circle of mm. friendship, a circle where you are thriving, yes. and a circle of security where the children can grow. Mm. God bless you. And for any comments and any submissions and any questions and, 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 and demands, please go to our YouTube channel, Marriage and Life Stories with Kansime, and put your comments, your questions, and share this video so that many people can grow. And my God number is 0776 8080 If you want to contact me. Thank you so much.